10 miles outside the city of Las Vegas lies the suburb of Henderson, Nevada. On May 4, 1988, this small community changed forever. Three miles from town, two major explosions measuring 3.0 and 3.5 on the Richter scale ripped through the desert locale and sent visible shockwaves across a 10-mile radius. Two people died. Over 300 people in the surrounding area were injured. Property damage was nearly $100 million. The two explosions originated at the Pacific Engineering Production Company of Nevada, otherwise known as PEPCON. PEPCON was one of only two U.S. manufacturers of ammonium perchlorate, an oxidizer for solid rocket fuel. AP, or the long name is ammonium perchlorate, is a, um, a salt. It's comprised of ammonium, which is nitrogen and hydrogen, and uh, chlorate, which is comprised of chlorine and oxygen. This odorless white granular substance is not volatile if left alone. However, it becomes highly explosive if contaminated or combined with any kind of fuel. To give you some perspective, um, ammonium perchlorate, which is 55% by weight oxygen, as compared to the air we breathe, which is only approximately 29% by weight oxygen. So it's richer in oxygen and therefore promotes uh, combustion of most fuels uh, more intensely. Ammonium perchlorate is used on a large scale in solid fuel rocket engines for NASA and the military. It's the chemical in rocket propellant that releases oxygen, essential in the combustion of fuel. One of the biggest customers for AP is NASA's space shuttle program. On January 28, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger exploded 73 seconds after takeoff, causing NASA to ground all space shuttle flights. But PEPCON continued to manufacture ammonium perchlorate and stockpile it. Never before had so much ammonium perchlorate been stored in one location. We had approximately uh, 10 and a half million pounds of ammonium perchlorate being stored at the PEPCON facility. PEPCON was multiple buildings occupying approximately 15 acres. The buildings were typically constructed of uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic panels over metal uh, purlins and uh, beams and posts. Um, this was done because of the nature of perchlorate being so corrosive. On the morning of May 4, 1988, an open barrel of AP caught fire. It's our observation that the plant housekeeping was not very good. There's a very strong possibility that much of the ammonium perchlorate on site had some very low level of contamination. The fire from the one barrel rapidly spread to other storage containers and the fiberglass structure itself. The only tool that workers had to combat the fire was a garden hose. It was ineffectual. With a class 4 oxidizer, uh, such as ammonium perchlorate, there is no real method of fire extinguishment. Once it gets going, you can't put enough water on it quickly enough to break the combustion chain. The employees at PEPCON, our analysis showed and follow-up investigation showed that the safety briefings that they had uh, basically uh, included if there's a fire in the plant, run like hell. With wind blowing, the fire quickly became a raging inferno. When subjected to heat, the AP started releasing its energy, goes into a self-heating process. It's releasing copious amounts of oxygen, and it reaches what's called critical mass. At just a few hundred degrees, AP can begin to consume itself, acting as its own oxidizer and fuel. A chain reaction began. The plant was being engulfed by fire. Polyethylene drums launched like rockets into other nearby storage areas and ignited more AP. Detonation is a high-speed explosion as opposed to just a fire or a deflagration, which is a low-speed explosion. What we had at um, PEPCON was a detonation because it caused that final shock wave. 
The fire burned for approximately 20 minutes, generating tremendous amounts of heat before the explosion that caused the first shockwave. That's going to be loud. It basically proceeded through the storage uh, of ammonium perchlorate, very much like a Roman candle. And then this very rapid heating and thermal shock caused the ammonium perchlorate to explode. A total of seven explosions occurred. Firefighters rushing to the scene were caught in the shock wave and reassessed their adversary. To exacerbate an already critical situation, a natural gas pipeline ran directly under the plant. The final detonation, which measured about 3.5 on the Richter scale, occurred right over the gas line. It was a 16-inch gas line servicing the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Having consumed its fuel of AP, the initial fire burned itself out. But the ruptured pipeline fed a new 100-foot bloom of fire. It burned for almost an hour before the line was shut down.